Okay, so I'm here. I'm going to talk about why is caring for your employees great for business? Okay, so this is the topic. Very nicely selected, Richard. So I will perhaps introduce myself, aside from what Richard said. I'm actually, I was raised in Bohol, I, in a very idyllic, beautiful paradise. And then I went to a Catholic all-girls school, because this is a women thing, so I have to share that. And thereafter, I went to UP, uh, University of the Philippines in Cebu, to, do, uh, to take up my course in political science. After finishing my course, I found myself, you know, not finding the work that I like. So I thought maybe your cum laude degree, does, uh, cum laude um, honors will not get you so much anywhere. So then I decided I'll take up law. So I went to UP Diliman. I took up law. It was very hard, difficult. Uh, we were in that time where the passing rate of the bar was only 16%. So that was really horrific for parents <laughs> and for the students. We made it, and then I went to the Court of Appeals, and then subsequently I thought maybe I should do some, uh, something more, like specialize in a field. So I got accepted at Dalhousie University in Canada for a full scholarship and took up marine and environmental law. So then I found myself here in executive position in shipping. So that's the summary of my career. And maybe your takeaway is that you find your niche in my, in my industry, it's outside of the Philippines where the shipping is. It's purely male, mostly white. They're, they're the, the ones dominating the, the, um, the industry and mostly seafarers. I am not any of those, but I'm, I'm still here, <laughs> which is good. Okay, so on the personal note, I'm also a mother. I have two kids, uh, daughters. Uh, my husband has been very supportive of me and of our family, um, and that is the reason why I'm able to take, up, uh, take on a lot of challenges. So that's important for all of you. Find a good husband, marry well, <laughs> so your curls will take off, okay? <laughs> Don't tell him. <laughs> He's not here. Okay, so I, I joined the company in 2014 with a core belief, core beliefs. One is that our work, the jobs that we do, they're not mundane tasks. They are our participation in creation. Second, I also believe that you know, the jobs that we do, the businesses, they are helping build civilization. Third, I also believe that you know, the jobs that we do, in the jobs that we do, we build our nation. I'm, I'm UP, you know, stereotype, eight years of UP. So nation building is a must. And so it is how you approach your job. It is how I have approached my work. So I also believe that the person who comes to work is a full person, an integral human being with a heart, with a soul, with a mind, and he is also a social being. You cannot dissociate one from another. Otherwise, you'll create a monster. But he is not. Especially Filipinos are very impactful. You know, we're very emotional. That is who we are. There's nothing to be ashamed of it. So when I took over um, the operations of Dule for crewing in Manila, um, of course, any executive would look at financial bottom lines and, and operational success. That is your key. You know, your bottom line is your key. And that's what sets you apart. And that is what you're there for. But I also look at the employees, um, we have to engage and address the needs of our employees. As I've said, they are a full person, they are social, they're spiritual, they're intellectual, they're emotional. You have to understand that working with people, you cannot take one from the other. You cannot say, oh, forget the problems at work, forget the traffic, now focus. That, that is, the, the everybody, the whole being comes into the office and you have to address that. So to give you a bit of um, insight, when I took over in 2014, our company is of course Marine HR. So there were, I had 23 employees at, at the, in the office 
and there were 700, 700 seafarers on board at a given time with 350 on vacation. Four or five years later, this is our number. So we, we quadrupled, at least in shore staff. We're now 87 staff, 59 of whom are women. And then a large number of the 15, 59 are married also to seafarers, not necessarily in our sh uh, sailing in our ships. And we also are seafarers also. Uh, there are about 2,800 on board and 1,400 on vacation. So you can imagine the growth of the company and the disruptions that must have happened from 2014 up to the present. So thank you. Okay. So the, the, when you look at the number of people with you, uh, that you work with, that you work for, that you serve, you look at them and you say, am I just here to plod along and just you know, have them deliver bottom lines? Or am I supposed to do more? Am I supposed to look out for them, to serve them, to help them? When you go to church, when I go to church, or when we go to church, when you listen to lectures, these are not just empties, you know. The, your calling is there wherever you are, and you're not asked to go change the world in big ways, maybe in whatever you do, and I believe that. You know, I only have one life, and this is my job, so I have to do it well, <laughs> because otherwise, then I'll end up unhappy. So that, that is my core understanding also of what I'm supposed to do. So first is to make a decision when we when we drafted the vision for the company, which is basically me when I stepped in, I had to make a decision and a commitment to care for the employees. The employees who are in, in the office, as well as those who are in the vessels. And I have to work on that with limited funds because it was a challenge. It, is still, it still is. It has to be part of our strategic agenda we have to measure it, and I need to get buy-in from all the stakeholders, locally and internationally. So what, are, what is this that you're doing? You have to explain, you have to get buy-in, you have to make them understand. You make them feel good as well of the work that they're doing. Otherwise, if you don't get buy-in from anyone, then you just do it alone, and that is very sad. Now, um, employee engagement, we just look at the definition, is the emotional commitment an employee has to the organization and its goals resulting in the use of discretionary effort. This is how engagement is defined. I'm sure you are all experts in this and you know, um, you know this by heart. So it's having someone deliver beyond the call of duty. So that is engagement. I rested my rationale of uh, the programs that I eventually developed on, on this main thing, which Ganmar Landvik in his study in 2012 said, that in the Philippines, the family is the fundamental meaningful factor in inducing anyone to choose a maritime career. Therefore, it is logical that for any problems he has on board, the family is a solution in handling that problem. In short, a Filipino would normally go and seek a career at sea because of family. Kasi po, gusto kong tulungan yung aking pinsan, aking kapatid. Nobody goes there to say, very few, because I'd like to be uh, the captain, I'd like to be a chief engineer. It's normal because I have siblings I need to send to school, my parents I need to support them after. That is always. And for some, who are not used to our culture will find it a bit strange. Shouldn't you be here for the professional reason? But I said, do not negate that because engagement and uh, any other way is still engagement. Okay, so that gives you a bit of a background on why this study of Lamvik is very important. At the same time, when you look at the challenge of a seafarer, you would see that he has maybe According to one study by Jensen and Bauer in 2004, there were at least 23 identified stressors of a seafarer on life on board. You know, vibration, 
constant motion, isolation, and that is an issue. So, but number one, number one is separation from the family. So I, I said, okay, so this is the, the task I'm going to do. And I know on a personal level that of all the challenges that you have, that I had, the most difficult is parenting and marriage because you're under scrutiny 24-7. You can't wing it, you know? Your children will look at you, will follow you, will mimic you, and there's no downtime. downtime. You're with them at your downtime. So that for me is most challenging. And I also had a full understanding that the nature of the work of the seafarers who are out at sea separates them fundamentally from their children and spouses. That is tough. I see that in the staff who are working with us, the, the women who are left behind, and how they struggle going to work every day, being mothers and fathers for their children, you know, dealing with in-laws, and then struggling to get to work on time, the deliverables at the office, going through traffic, and being alone because the husband is not there. But that is a choice. So, so then I decided maybe we have to have a program. And this is what we call the family program. There are, I partnered then with a foundation called EduChild. So we sat down and I said, can we run the programs that you normally have for us? So one of which most popular is what, what they call Beyond I Do. So this is nice because the uh, staff, my people in the office, as well as seafarers, about 15 couples would get away for a weekend. They will have a seminar. Uh, they will renew their love and commitment. And often you wonder, like there are conversations that have taken place in the couples retreat that they've never had with their spouses even before during getting married. Like what is our vision for the family? What, what are we going to do? What are our plans? And this takes them away for a, a bit of time, for overnight, for two days to talk, really just talk away from their children and away from the hassles of every day. So this we have run, I think, three times in different three years, and always the response and the feedback is phenomenal. And they also have a, a ceremony where they, where they, they renew their vows before a priest. And then the second one is called Marvelous Parenting. So this is a different method because it's called case study method, where, where the belief is parenting is an acquired skill. So it is a skill rather than a collection of techniques and concepts. So the best way to learn is to simulate no, the skills through case studies. I, I introduced this to the company because I am a product of, of this myself. Um, a lot of other companies, big ones, have run this for the executives and their managers. And even the school where my kids go to would have us go through the program uh, for as parents no, of the children. And I saw that it was very beneficial, even for us to be reminded. So probably I thought maybe this is something I could introduce to, to my colleagues, and they, they like it. The one on the photo is a captain who works in the office and his spouse. They were, they were doing the Be and I Do course. So next slide. And then we also have, we also go to the provinces at least once or twice a year. We go there, we bring someone from EduChild to speak and to talk to them because most of the programs are run out of Manila and they're not here. So they've asked us, so we've been to Iloilo, we've been to Bohol, we've been to Cagayan de Oro. We still have to plan for the year, but that is a plan really to, to go where our seafarers live or where their families are so they can benefit from this. And then we have a, another interesting partner uh, he was introduced by a colleague of mine, an, an executive of another shipping, a female executive from another shipping company. And Dr. D. Doy Lobaton, I don't know if he's familiar, his face is on a billboard in EDSA because he, he preaches at the feast. But he is a doctor and he speaks about listen to your body and your being. He runs his seminars. What is interesting about this is that the seafarers are taught how to really prevent illnesses. 
because they are our only um, resources are health, right? And for the, in their case, it's more stringent because every time they go out to a contract, they have to be fit to work. They have to be healthy, and they have to be healthy when they return. So that is their only resource. And at least in this in this uh, seminars, they are taught how to care for the body naturally. And he is a doctor, schooled in medicine. So there's um, the science behind it. And then last, we also have a partnership uh, with Ms. Uh, Nina Anover on wealth management. One of the problems of our OFWs is that they earn so much and then there's nothing left after. So it's very important since they also have multiple households to support different siblings, all asking money from them, the in-laws, it's always a problem uh, how to, to you know, distribute the income. So they end up with nothing when they're old or when it's time for them to retire. So in the office, we have also have more staff engagement activities. These are photos of my staff. These are our photos. These are not stock photos lifted from the internet. So we also really focus on HR trainings. Uh, we have leadership, communication, customer service. We also do operational excellence trainings, uh, objective-based KPIs, continuous process improvements. And as I've said, we are souls. So we do pray with each other, uh, for each other. We have masses and we have prayers. And we feel it especially when, for example, a colleague at sea dies, or in our case last year, a colleague at work dies. So we know that at least we have prayed for, for each other and for the families who are left behind. We, we, the usual, I, I'm sure you run this, but the difference with us is the staff would run the programs themselves without, interv with, without management taking the helm or HR. It's really staff driven. The, the events like trick or treat and um, Christmas party, we have Zumba every week. And I challenge them, show yourselves, no? Week one, the, the 36 week challenge. Week one and week 36, has there, any has there been any change in the way you look? But sabi nila, ma'am, bangs lang po humaba <laughs> in Zumba. So. so we go back to the science or the studies behind it. So despite the apparent softness of the word engagement, science has shown a correlation between engagement and service, quality, safety, retention, sales, profit, and shareholders returns. So when you are in your companies and you have, you have to spend on training, you have to spend on on engagement activities, it is not a waste. There's proven science behind it. In a 2002 study, Mosson and Coors, which is a beverage company, they have seen 1.7 million savings, US dollars in savings, by strengthening their commitment to employee engagement. Okay, so now I will show you the results, the impact on our company no, out of these engagement activities. So what is an example of beneficial impact in Dulles Seafront? So for 2018, our results came out. So we were able to run our KPIs. We have about maybe 50 KPIs in different key result areas. We extracted some of the, the most significant ones. But at the same time, you have to consider that when we ended our appraisals, employee appraisals, most of them have either high average or excellent results. And this is our KPI that we have run. So for crew retention, which is keeping our seafarers with us, we have exceeded the target of 90%. So that means the program has worked, among others. <laughs> and then we also have, this is crew change, meaning the seafarers should be able to get off the contract on time, not stay on the vessel longer or shorter than they should be, and we are exceeding our targets of 90%. And finally, we also have allotment, which is their wages, paid per assigned schedule, and again, we have exceeded our targets. It's 100% for the finance department. So our, because our company is Marine HR, we recruit, we select, 
We pay the seafarers, we run their payrolls, we also do some performance management, and this is the result of the company. So I also like to take the opportunity to, to welcome my team who's here, or some of them. Please stand. <laughs> Yeah, and Jera is by the stairs. Uh, she's a third engineer, a female, a third engineer. So she decided to stay, but uh, yeah. And this is, this is my team, and without them, we wouldn't have gotten the, the terrific results that we, we have. And with, we, I end my presentation here, and I thank you. I also thank Richard, who's been very gracious in including us <laughs> in, his, in his fora in different engagements. I'm also grateful for Asia CEO Awards, for both the awards and for this opportunity. Thank you.